Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we will be seeing how we can replace the green screen in a video using some AI tools with a realistic looking background. Now, before I talk further about this, just want to mention that I have given this 20 second clip to you. Right now, I've just muted the audio. So you'll be able to download this. The link is given in the description so that you can work along with me. Secondly, the tools that we will be using can be used for free up to a certain extent. So you will get some free credits when you use these tools. And in particular, the most important AI tool that we will be using here to generate this background is going to be Adobe, Adobe Firefly. Also, why are we exactly doing this? Because when it comes to, let's say, setting up a YouTube studio or any kind of a studio that can be difficult and expensive for a lot of people. So a lot of people opt for this strategy where they just shoot themselves against a green screen and then just replace the background. And when it comes to replacing the background, what happens is sometimes a lot of people will just replace it with a solid color, like maybe a gray color or a white color, anything, but that can start to look a bit boring and get monotonous. So the next thing people do is that they go on to Google search for an image and they just put an image behind, right? And the problem with that approach is if you just put anything random behind, it doesn't really look very real. Why? Because the angle, the perspective, they don't really match the subject in the foreground. This is the problem that Firefly AI will help us solve. Okay, so let's get started with this tutorial. So how it's all going to start is actually not with these AI tools. So you can see we're going to be using Firefly here. You can create uh, an account and you get uh, certain credits that you can use. So you can do it for uh, free. Uh, then we're also going to be using ChatGPT to create the prompt for Firefly. We're also going to be using pixelcut.ai. So you'll understand this later, but again, you can use this for free. But first of all, we'll actually be starting things with by going to Google and trying to understand, trying to get inspiration about the type of the background that we want to generate. Because it might happen that you right now, you your mind just might be blank. You don't exactly know what should come here in place of the green screen, right? So how do we make this process more objective so that everyone, you can do this every time. So I've just gone to Google and I just typed in YouTube studio interior design. Now it doesn't have to be a YouTube studio, but you're just gonna get more images because YouTube studios are pretty popular, okay? Then you can go on to images here and that's where you'll start to see these different images with, you know, kind of stuff that you're used to seeing when you see a video production uh, studio. And the idea is to find something that is in your head, something close to that, so that then we can take this image and use it as a reference image inside chat GPT to create a prompt for Firefly. That's what we are trying to do here. Now, one of the things that can help you here is because if you just go through this, these are pretty random looking, right? These images are totally different from each other. At the very least, you might have some kind of a color scheme in your mind, like what, uh, you know, in a very general way, what are you seeing in your mind that you can reproduce here? So for example, in my case, I, when I'm talking about a video production studio, I would love to have bright white ceilings, um, maybe wooden cabinets, something like that, okay? But you have to think of the main color that is in your mind. So for example, in my mind right now, it's white. Like I want a bright looking studio. So then what you can do here is you can go on to tools because this really helps you narrow down things. And if you go to the color menu here, this is gonna help you filter down according to the color that you're choosing. So let's say in my mind it was white. So I select white and you can see now I start to get close to the studio look that I want in, in my background, right? So let's say I really like this image. Now you don't really have to worry about what the exact image is. What you're looking for here is the different elements within the image. Like I can see, yeah, there's something like a wooden thing and I see a lot of white colors here. So this is fine, okay? The background is not gonna be exactly like this once we generate it. So just look at the different elements. Once you're happy with something, just save this image on your computer, okay? Once you've done that, we're gonna go back over to first of all, to chat GPT. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write in a message that I'm attaching a reference image here. I want to generate a background for my green screen video. So make a prompt which can be used in Firefly. Okay, so let me write something like this and let's proceed after that. All right, so here is a very simple message. Create a Firefly prompt to generate the background. I'm attaching a reference image. So we can now attach that same image that we had got from Google. And you can see the image is getting attached. And now the moment it's done, I can hit this and it's gonna create 
a prompt by analyzing this image. So let's just wait for that and you can see it's done. Of course, you can do this on your own also, but I just feel that, you know, rather than imagining and being so creative, let AI handle this and just copy this. Then we're gonna go back to Adobe Firefly. This is where the main magic is going to happen. So what are you gonna do here is, first of all, don't just enter the prompt here. There are a couple of important things that we need to do here so that we can get a background which is close to the perspective and the other things that we have in this video. That is very important, okay? To make it look close to realistic. So when you go to firefly.adobe.com and you've created your free account, or if you're already a paid member, then you can, Go over to this scroll down and you're going to see text to image option. So just hit that. And you're going to see some sample images. Just click on any one. Doesn't matter right now because we just want to access the interface. You can remove this prompt because we're going to enter our prompt here. And now we will change some things here. So in the model, let the latest model remain. Right now it's Firefly image 3 because that's going to be the most advanced one. In aspect ratio, since we're doing this for a video, Go for widescreen 16 is to 9. This works out to be the best, okay? Because this is the closest you can get to usually what the uh, ratio is for a landscape orientation video, okay? Of course, if you have a portrait orientation, then you can choose the portrait one, okay? In content type, select photo because we want this background to be photorealistic. It shouldn't look like a painting. So just make sure this is select. Now this is the most important part in composition because this is where we have to give that reference image to Firefly, that he has maintained this perspective, okay? So how we do this is if I go back to Premiere Pro here and you can pretty much, even though I'm showing this in Premiere Pro, you can do this in other software also, okay? So in Premiere Pro, you can, take a screenshot any time of a video by hitting this icon. And that's what we need. We basically need an image or a frame out of this video, which we can upload on Firefly. So here it's very easy. I can just hit this option that says export frame. So I'm just gonna select this because we just need to tell it where the subject is and how the video basically looks like. And there under composition reference, we're gonna hit upload image and select that same image. So you can see here, we've got that screenshot here of the frame and we can now hit continue. So this is where the next thing that we have to do is we have to, uh, Firefly is asking us, okay, this is your reference image for the composition. Do you want me to have the liberty to change this a bit or do you really wanna keep very close to this? So we're gonna increase the strength because we really wanna keep this as close to this as possible, okay? So we're not giving Firefly any liberty to change the composition too much. Rest of the things you really don't have to do here. So you can just leave everything as it is. The only thing left is we have to just go back to ChatGPT. If you hadn't copied this, just do it again and make and paste the prompt here. And now we're gonna hit try prompt and we're gonna get our images here. So let's wait for them. All right, so you can see that images have started to come. So now if you look at this, it's trying to basically stick very close to what we had in the foreground. It was me there, but of course this is AI generated, but the look is the same, right? And according to the fire, the chat GPT prompt that we got, it's trying to generate this background. So at this point, you can either be happy with this or you can hit generate again. Or if you like any particular one of them and you wanna just generate something similar, you can also hit this pen icon and hit generate similar. But do remember, if you're on a free account, it is gonna eat up your credits. So in this case, I mean, just so that, just to save time, we're just gonna select uh, one of these, okay, whichever looks uh, good here. So maybe, I think I'll just go for the first one. So I'm just gonna hit download here. And then what we need to now do is, we can't simply, with this image, we can't just put this uh, after replacing the green screen, why? Because this still has this person inside it. So that will be shown behind, right? If you think of it. So first of all, what we need to do is before we can go back to Premiere Pro and remove the uh, replace the green screen, we need to remove this person. Now inside Firefly, there is a feature by which you can do this, which is, so if I just go back, okay? So next to text to image, we also have this generative fill. And here, if I just upload that same image, so let me just do that. So I've just uploaded that image here. Now what I can do is there's a remove tool here, which I can use. So on this particular subject, so you can 
see here if I just do this I can get rid of this and I also I have to get rid of the desk here or the table rather because I already have a table in that particular shot. Now I can do this, it's just that according to me, this tool doesn't always work uh, in one go. Sometimes you just have to do this in a repeated way, okay? So, by, so one is that yes, you can, if it works for you, nothing like it, but according to me, something which is very similar to this, so we'll wait for that to render, but something that works in a much more seamless way is the same tool, but by these people called pixel cut, Dot AI. Again, this is free to use. So if you go to this website, by the way, all the links are given in the description, so you'll be able to locate them. But here, once you go here, you can, under tools, you can go on to Magic Eraser. So if you go here, and let's upload that same picture. All right, so you can see we've got the same kind of a tool here also. We get the brush again, just like we did in Firefly, and just do the same thing again, okay? Just brush on the subject and in this case also on the table. And since we've done there also, we'll be able to see which one here in this case also does a better job, okay? And since we've done this, we can just hit apply. Let's check the Firefly one. So you can see, right, yeah, it is pro probably it's not done a bad job at all, but it's still not very seamless. Like if you notice this, it is slightly left a bit of that outline, but not bad at all. This is absolutely usable because towards the end, after we replace this, we're anyway gonna blur the background a bit. So that's not gonna be a problem, but let's just wait for the result here. And you can see, right, this just looks much better. So you can use both, but in my opinion, this is superior. It's free to use. We didn't even have to create an account here, okay? Pixelcut.ai is a website I've been very, very impressed with, by the way, okay? But I'll probably make more videos on the different tools it has. But right now, let's just download this. Because now it's finally time to go back to Premiere Pro. And what we, we're just left with one task. We just have to remove this gr uh, green screen and replace it with the image that we've generated. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be using, in Premiere Pro, there's the ultra key feature here. So if you go on to effects, by the way, I have a dedicated tutorial on Ultra Key itself. If you want to, if you are interested, you do use Premiere Pro, then do check that. That video is hovering above. You can check it out later. So here I'm just going to type in Ultra so that we can find Ultra Key. Just drag it here. It's a very simple tool to use. We just have to give it the sample color from our green screen and pick out an area where most of it turns black. That means most of it is getting masked out. So maybe just try once more, that should be fine. And on the setting, we're gonna select aggressive and that's pretty much done. And finally, there's a setting called as pedestal. We can increase this slightly just to pretty much get rid of everything. Even if it's not fully gone here, it's okay. But like I said, you can check out that tutorial on Ultra Key where I explain all these settings also. But the point is now the green screen is pretty much gone away. And what we need to do now is let's import that image that we had got from Pixel Cut after removing the stuff there. All right, so I've just imported this image here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag this video. So this is the video, this is the audio. I'm just gonna drag the video above, like just to the next track so that we can drag this underneath so that it can come here. So do this. And right now we're not seeing the full image because the resolutions of the video and this image are different. So what we can do is on this image, this is the image, right click and hit scale to frame size. When you do that, you can see now it starts to fit in. Just on the sides a bit, we are seeing a bit of black. So sometimes, even though you have actually resized it, you might face this issue because of the size issues, but that's not a problem because with this selected, if you go to scale, I can just slightly hit the up arrow to keep increasing it till the time we just scale it slightly larger to get rid of this. So maybe like this, that's all, okay? But you can see this is looking really, really nice right now. Now I won't say, of course, I'm not in any way suggesting that this is as real as a real background. Like if you were to create a studio, that's not my intention, but this definitely is much better than if you were to take a random image from Google and just try to put it behind because that's simply not gonna match the perspective. Here you can see not, 100% real, but still looks pretty good. And what you can do in order to increase the realism here is to just add a bit of a blur effect and maybe just play around with the brightness of the background a bit. So let me just show you that. So the reason we are doing that is because if you think of it, like usually when you're shooting a video, let's say if this was a real background and the focus is on you, okay, usually you would have seen that 
the background is a bit blurred, right? That's because that's how it works, right? The focal plane will be around the subject. Because especially when we shoot videos, we want to let in as much light as possible. So we usually use a wider aperture. That means the depth of field is usually shallow. Not in every case, but usually the background is a bit blurred. So what we can do here is with this image selected, we can again go over to effects. We can go on to just type in blur here and we will find this effect which says Gaussian blur. So we're just going to drag this on the image, okay? So now it will come here so you can see under properties Gaussian blur is there and I like a, just to increase this blurriness to 10. So just notice what you're going to see here. It's just going to slightly turn blurred. And so can you see? This just in my opinion just looks more real, okay? So the optics look much more realistic. The second thing that I like to do is that in all probability, if this was real, we would have been like, for example, I was actually using a video light. And since I'm in front, the light that is falling on me will be slightly um, more than what is reaching the background. Unless until we had separate lights on the background. So what I also like to do, and this is completely optional, is that I just like to decrease the brightness a bit on the background to just to make it uh, look more real. So how you can do that here is with again this uh, image selected, we get this Lumetri color uh, window here. Okay, if you're not seeing this, you can go to window and just go to Lumetri color and then just turn down the highlights a bit. Highlights refers to the bright parts in the image. So if I just do this, just notice, okay. Just a bit, not too much because then you start to see the halo around the subject. We don't want that also. Maybe in fact, I think I just went slightly overboard. Maybe yeah, this much, okay? But don't decrease it too much. And also at this point, I want, I want to say something. When you choose your background image, like for example, remember I was telling you that yes, it was a whitish look that was in my mind. That is not just because of the, the appeal of the design itself. You also have to slightly think about your original video. For example, in the original green screen video, if you remember, like I was, there was no, uh, we didn't have a dramatic look in the video, right? It was just a flat, bright lighting. So if we choose a bright background, it's going to match that. For example, when you're looking for your insp uh, inspiration on Google in that first step, don't look for a dark background. That's simply not going to match. Okay, so just wanted to point that out also, but slightly decreasing it here, I feel is uh, okay. But like I said, this step was pro probably optional, but this much is fine. As you can see, right? This looks pretty good. And once you know this method, you can have and create a different background anytime that you want. And therefore, your backgrounds in your videos will not look boring at all. All right, so now that everything is done, let's just unmute this and let's just play this video for a bit so that we'll be able to see how everything looks here. Hello there, are you someone who wants to learn how to use a green screen in order to take your... I think that looks pretty good. Before we end this video, just want to point out if you're someone, you want to learn this art of creating these kind of budget YouTube studios or video production studios using a green screen. And you also want to know about the other gear that you have to use. Then I've got a dedicated course for this called YouTube Studio Setup on a Budget. The link will be given in the description. It's available, available by, via Udemy. And I hope that you like this video. In case you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.